Our next guests are an award-winning film and television directing duo, and they are here for the world premiere of their first feature film called We're All Gonna Die. Please welcome Rocket Jump's Freddie Wong and Matt Arnold to the South by Southwest <laughs> studio. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, good it was good, good flavor right? yeah, on it. it was yeah, good. yeah, yeah, it was that's amazing. the best one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, we're keeping that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. it's, so, it's so great to have you guys here. Congratulations thank on you, like, your thank first you. feature film. This yeah. is thank incredible. You. Yeah, thank you for having how, us. How does it feel to be at South by Southwest, like promoting, showing? Oh, my goodness. I mean, well, I'll tell you the first thing we did was we got barbecue the yeah, moment we landed. Oh, right away. Like, immediately. You tell me about the barbecue. Oh, ooh, yeah. oh, they were out of the brisket at La Barbecue, but they still had the chopped brisket, and it was like, fine, good enough. See, so fantastic. Where did you go? We go to La, La Barbecue. La Barbecue. La Barbecue yeah. is east of here a little bit, and here's okay. why it's good is because they got robbed a few years ago of 20 briskets. <laughs> you know it's good. Wait, 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 they, didn't, they didn't go in for the money. They went in for 20 briskets, and people were like, when, what do you do with 20 briskets? Like, you must be selling it. Everyone's like, it's got to be on the street somewhere. You got to find where the, the guy's flipping briskets. I got so many recommendations, and now I want to go there because they got robbed. They got robbed They got robbed of the briskets. That's the best endorsement you can have at a barbecue <laughs> restaurant. Please tell me that's like on the sign somewhere. <laughs> they, uh, they, they, they should. I would they put should. that on the side. I, I don't want this to go too off the rails, but Burger King once did a campaign where they showed photos of actual Burger Kings like burning down. <laughs> and their thing was, oh yeah, we have flame grilled burgers. Like, <laughs> I mean, I was, this is actually a thing that we've been talking about, which is like, okay, you're, you're put in charge of Burger King. They're in dire straits right now, right? Like they're yeah. the top bottom of the fast food tier. How are you turning it around? I have my answer, but how would you turn around Burger King? How would King? I turn around Burger yeah, yeah. King? <laughs> now you're putting on my advertising yeah. hat. Think about it. Honestly, Honestly, you got to change the Whopper name. You got change the change Whopper, the Whopper yeah, name. Change the Whopper okay. name My know? answer is Burger King sells weed now. Like straight <laughs> up, straight up. If you heard Burger King, it's like, listen, we're the first fast food franchise and to those sell marijuana. You could change, you could change, do, change, you change the Whopper. The Whopper. <laughs> Burger King sells weed now. People will be showing up. <laughs> to be honest, like if Taco Bell could like oh, corner God. the Munchie oh, Mill, I oh, think Burger yeah, King could do that. They, they got to get in, especially in California. But you know, I think we're getting off the rails. Uh, Austin. Speaking, speaking of weed, uh, so <laughs> you guys got a wild film here with yeah, like aliens, weird. alien spikes, like bees, love, <laughs> loss, movie. Like yeah. it's just, there's so much that goes into this movie. Can you like talk about like walking in with the pitch and like convincing yeah. people like, hey. Luckily we didn't have to walk. We didn't have to walk the anyone because we, we self-financed this one off nice. of our Dungeons and Dragons podcast, believe it or not. Mm. But the what it was was we were, you know, we were sitting around during the pandemic and you know Matt and I have done a lot of road trips. Uh, I think you know one of the first things we did on on the YouTube channel was we did like this ten thousand mile like circumnavigating the like all of America road trip and some of those stories like show up in this movie, but we love road trip movies and we were like cooped up and we also you know we're, we're, we're thinking about you know I don't know what it was something in the air I guess but like at the time during the pandemic just thinking about like you know the end of the world mm -hmm. and our own mortalities <laughs> and we wanted to just get out and just like make a movie one that we could like handle ourselves without having to pitch and like go around because we've been doing that because we had been day. pitching for like five six years and we had been pitching so many one location movies like i like we couldn't bring ourselves to write another movie where we're trying to come up with a reason why somebody doesn't go outside to yeah. solve the answer because yeah. they have to yeah. stay inside <laughs> and we're like you know let's not write another one location movie let's write a no location movie because yeah. the other cheap way to do something is just to go on the road and we love road trips and yeah. And yeah, so we kind of started with that, and then yeah, the apocalypse, and we've always enjoyed, um, you know, like Lovecraft and apocalyptic movies, but we always thought it'd be more fun to, rather than, I feel like all apocalyptic movies have like two vibes. They're either, they're either the world already ended. Yeah, how you living in it. And yeah. then it's like, oh, it's essentially, kill people and yeah, it's, you know, it's, a, we always, it's, it's apocalypse porn. We always say like, oh, it's like, it's so bad you don't have a job or a wife and kid uh, anymore. And all you gotta do is use a big gun to kill bad guys. <laughs> like, 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 all the apocalypse is so guns. hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or the other version is, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's fighting hey, we, an asteroid that's gonna destroy the earth and then you win and you don't have to pay taxes anymore if it's Armageddon right. or whatever. I'm, I'm hoping that yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so we thought rock. it'd be fun to do one where it's like that's not you know we're the joke is I mean it's not a joke but like you know like the Black Plague fifty percent of of Europe died they still had parties they, they still hung on. out they, yeah, they, yeah. They, had to, they had to pay their the yeah. serfs had to figure out how to farm like the life moves right, on like, life moved on there's no after, apocalypse yeah. that just ends things so we just want to do a movie where it happens and life moves on so you just gotta keep kind of doing your thing yeah, yeah. so for us the apocalypse is very much just like thing that's happening in the background that we everyone's still dealing with is this shadow that hangs over us like but that. it's not like 
It's not like that's the only thing we're worried about all the time. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like it's like you're adjusting to the apocalypse like as it happens. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I like how, and again, I, I don't want to liken this 100% to the apocalypse, but we got damn close with the pandemic. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. And there's like a lot of overlap between like what we experienced in that and like what goes into this film as well. Yeah. Can you guys yeah. talk a little bit about just kind of like the influences of that? Were you influenced by that? Like, yeah, it's a weird one where I think I think we had kind of come up with um, we were kind of developing the idea even before like. It, the pandemic really got going, but then we kept writing during it, and it just it, it just reinforced like the idea, like like you said, like the first week of the pandemic. I think I remember like driving to pick up my kid, and it was like six o'clock, and there was like a curfew going to happen. And I was yeah, like, yeah. am I going to be able to pick like my kid up? Like, it's like <laughs> are police going to pull me over? Like, what the hell? And that first week was wild, right? I think everybody thought like the world was going to end. And then as we kept writing, it's like within a few months, it was like, oh, we were still recording our podcast. You know, my, my wife works at, at USC and she had to, you know, get back into work. And like everybody was just kind of moving on yeah. as you're just like watching the numbers go up and the world go on. And it just, if anything, it probably just, as we were writing, it felt more truthful and kind of just reinforced kind of what we were doing. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, what's funny is like, uh, I remember like working in my corporate job at the time when yeah. like the pandemic was just starting to like kick off. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, my boss <laughs> walks in and he's like, hey, so I hear like we might be like going home for like a week or two. And he was like kind of excited, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it was like what you were talking about, just kind of yeah. like, oh, the world's ending. Like, oh my God, don't have to do this, don't have to do this. And the way he looked at me and said, yeah, man, it feels like a snow day. It's gonna oh be Oh my God. I never saw that man again. <laughs> <laughs> never That's saw so. him again. <laughs> so it's so, every now and then I'll hit him up and say, yeah, man. Like, well, it was a snow day, huh? <laughs> it was a it was snow day, day huh? Yeah. Turned it to a snow five years now. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's pretty insane. Uh, this movie feels like can you talk a little bit about like the budget that it took to make this yeah. movie because it feels bigger than its budget. Oh, right? well, good. That's yeah. a, that means we did our job. Yeah, well, right. <laughs> Uh, so, like, a lot of this came from, you know, I think we have, you know, we it, it's technically our first feature film, mm -hmm. but we've done a lot of stuff on YouTube, we've done, like, web series, we've done a couple of shows for Hulu. So, it, it's not the first time for us behind the camera, and a big part of kind of where our career trajectory took us was, like, knowing visual effects and kind mm -hmm. of knowing how to get bang for your buck out of visual effects. So, you know, one of these, one of the sort of observations, I told Matt this, I was like, okay, we have, like, an alien thing, we're trying to figure out what this alien object could be. Mm -hmm. I was like, as long as it's, like, always kind of far away. Yeah, yeah. It's not expensive to do it when it's that far away. You know what I mean? Like, if it's just there, kind right. of in the sky over there, that's not as hard of, if it's like, oh yeah, it's a creature and it's next to you and it's touching and you know, you're just mm -hmm. like, okay, that's very expensive very fast. But if it's just like over by the mountains over there, like, Easy. no problem. Yeah. Easy, you, you know? Um, so, so a lot of it was trying to find like, and, and applying a lot of these like, like kind of hacks to try and figure out ways to make things look good without having to spend like, Loads of money on because at the end of the day, we also we do a lot of our effects ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's also we could take the time. It's yeah. always like, right, time, quality, cheap. You can only do like two of those. Yeah, yeah. And because we were, we were doing it ourselves, like, so much of it was also understanding, like, let's shoot what we can with the actors, with the whole crew. But, like, since it's a road trip movie and it's out there, like, we can go and me and Freddie can just do another road trip a couple months later, just on our own dime, just to, you know, get some more vistas and get stuff to get all that big stuff. Like, I feel like all the budget kind of comes in at the end with just us doing it ourselves, like after the fact. Yeah. yeah, and don't put all that stress on like, you know, the actors just wanna have time to do their thing. They don't wanna be worried about like, yeah, yeah. all the VFX you gotta do. So we do our best to try to put that like after the fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that trust too, that you know, the actors like, hey, I just need to act like you guys will handle the rest and like, yeah. I, I like that collaboration. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about that giant sphere, by the way. Oh yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> it's like, <laughs> it's like <clears throat> there's inspiration that in my mind, I was like, this reminds me of District 9. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like yeah, right, yeah, and like definitely. I feel like I, I, you could tell me if you were inspired by that. But what was the inspiration was behind the giant spike? Weirdly enough, what it came <laughs> down to was it's it's the parable of the sword of Damocles, mm. a little bit. At least because in our head we were just joking around because we never settled on like what is this alien thing. Right. Yeah. And in a very Cthulhu way and very like Lovecraftian way, it's like it's beyond our mortal comprehension. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of that's sort of some of the themes we got into with like the beekeeping, which is you know the character is a beekeeper. And it's like well yeah, human society to bees is incomprehensible. Right. Aliens right. must be like to even think that's like oh they want to invade they want it's like no yeah they're not even in the same <laughs> yeah. like we're not even in the same plane you're of like, existence you're just like you sitting know? in your little hive and like a big metal object comes in like spray smoke at you like you're like what the, what, yeah, like, what the yeah. hell is there's so like, like, like yeah this is a normal thing that i do <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, why like, so we, like we were joking it could be anything from like yeah it's just like it's just it's just like a leg. Mm -hmm. It's just chilling in this area. <laughs> yeah. of, it's just like, someone's leg. It's just like some alien, alien leg, and everyone's like making it. Yeah, we all have a different. I like to think it's just like you know, like you were just walk going on a walk, and you see a flower, and you kind of just like pick it. It's just like some alien, just like 
pokes our planet. Yeah. But like, you know, for <laughs> him, time for him, a split time second scale. is yeah. like millions of years or whatever. For right. him, he's just like, oh, that's weird. Right. And yeah. it's like he's destroyed the whole planet. He doesn't know what it is. It's but then the giant alien walking, just like, oh, I'm taking a little stroll. Yeah. Like, it's like that's what the yeah, jumps yeah. are. It's like, and then yeah, like, exactly. it's, and that's like a visual metaphor, right? It's like it's this like spiky, weird object. And, you know, it's like sort of Damocles being this like thing that's hanging over your head and could drop at any point. And it's this like burden of like mortality yeah. and this yeah. like. But it's like at the same time, it's like, yeah, but we're not immortal beings. We all have the sort of Damocles hanging over us. Like, we will all yeah. die at yeah, some yeah, point. Yeah, that is a fact. Yeah. That we all, at some point, you have to confront. You know, and 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 I think that like that sort of metaphor and that image of this thing that's just hanging over everyone, sort of like I just kind of intuitively made sense. Right. Yeah. Um, I will say you guys tapped into my uh, innate fear of existentialism, like oh, yeah, yeah. things that are bigger than what they should be. Like oh, yeah. you know, yeah. like do you have like, like the thassal is that thassalophobia? I think I do. Like I think I do. I don't thing? mess do with what's deep in the ocean. Yeah. Like whales scare the crap out of me. Yeah, yeah, like you know what I'm saying? Moby Dick. Big. Like how is that big in water? Like, that makes sense. Doesn't make any sense. I have a general rule. I don't mess with anything that can eat me by accident. <laughs> you, know <what> I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and like this this spike reminds me a lot of like you know one of my favorite Marvel characters because I fear him so much uh -huh. is Galactus. Oh yeah. How like it like is what you were saying like. It's yeah. the scale, like he's like his actions are bigger than our moral comprehension. Yeah. Like, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I was really feeling like every time I saw that spike, I'm like, I know it's a comedy, but that's kind of like, <laughs> kind of messing with me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you're tapping into that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I want to talk to you, like Freddie. You said that uh, a lot of life comes down to like a lot of at bats. Yeah, Can you like yeah, yeah. expand on that? Yeah, like I think that you know, I think especially right now, you have so many people. You know, a lot of these. Uh, a lot of these kids trying to get into like, you know, content creator, influencer, you know, and it's like, like when I first started doing uh, YouTube stuff, like no, nobody knew what to call it. Like, you know, it was like, I think for a bit, there was like no joke. They were like, oh, maybe these new celebrities are gonna, like, <laughs> I, I, it was bad. <laughs> like, no, they, cause no one settled on the word influencer yet. Yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of, <laughs> but a lot, shopping, but yeah. a lot of times, like, I think for, it's about practice, mm -hmm. right? And I think it's not about necessarily being like, I have a great idea I'm gonna put out and it's gonna go right yeah. away. Like very rarely does that happen, you know? And what's more helpful in terms of your development as an artist, as a creative individual is not, is about doing the reps, getting, getting, getting your chances to, to try something out and like, uh, so at bats, it's not about like being a per perfect at you know swinging. Yeah. It's about keep you know honing your craft, keep developing your craft, mm -hmm. and the only way I think you can do that in a way that like accelerates it quickly is by putting yourself out there and trying to mm -hmm. do something. And it's like a lot of times it might fail. Like for example, we had two Hulu shows. Both of those had one season. Mm -hmm. That means. They didn't do good. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, you still got fans though. Like, I feel like true, a lot true. of like, you know, one season things. Like, yeah, I get yeah, pissed yeah. off when they go away. Yeah, you and, know. But that was also super helpful for us too because it's like I think we learned so much from doing yeah. those experiences. And it's like it's not about always like aiming for like success. I think it's like it's more important. It's more productive to just think about the the, the process and the work that goes into it and being and finding your enjoyment from that. Mm -hmm. Rather than these end, these vague end goals that are out of your hands anyway. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay, see, I like that because like I feel like as a content creator, like yeah, I can, you know yeah. relate. And now I'm on the other side, like TikTok, where yeah. people are trying to figure out like what that is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, influencer is now like it almost feels like a slur, low key, like oh, yeah, yeah, a yeah, little yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. you know. Oh, but, but well, guess what? I'm hosting now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> <hi. Poster. laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, but like, yeah, and like, and it doesn't help, right? That because it's it's the once money showed up into that ecosystem mm -hmm. now people are getting it because I remember when YouTube first started out like all the guys that I knew who were getting into it they were all people like in high school they like making videos yeah, and they're like yeah I just was putting it, it up in yeah. front of it and then the moment it's like yo so and so is a millionaire now and they made you know, they bought like a car and all and then all of a sudden all, it just turned around being like oh you make money off of this mm -hmm. then you have people coming to like okay now I'm just trying to like min max it and like right. make money off of it which is again like that's just kind of the, the natural way that that goes but then as someone who is trying to like get it, it's it's why like mm -hmm. influencer becomes this weird thing because it's like yeah it's like it, it, you're, it's unclear what the what the does, what the goal is for yeah. some people sometimes. You're just yeah. like, what are you trying to do with this? Look, you know? at, look at you guys now. You guys got your first feature film and I'm hosting you guys talking about the feature <laughs> film. So, you know, we're doing our thing. Yeah. Uh, we have a quote here that like, we really want to hear about. And this goes back to 2011. Mm -hmm. oh. So <laughs> it says, making stuff. a feature film or making a TV show as a definition of success, that's out of date. Yeah. I would like to like get you guys' thoughts on that. Like, do you I, still feel that way? I do, because I yeah. think that like as a goal, as an end goal, you know, I think that that's, it's sort of missing the point of what I, I think is a healthier relationship mm -hmm. with, uh, with, with an art form, which is, you know, I don't think, I don't think Michelangelo's like, yo, if I can just 
get that chapel gig. <laughs> if I can just paint that ceiling, like I'll have made Man, it. You know, real. that's not that is real. It's like, no, I don't think so. You know, I think that like for us, the core of it has always been whether it's you know the, the, the through line, whether or not it's you know, TikTok, YouTube, mm-hmm. online media, or right. the movie, it's storytelling and it's wanting to kind of put something out there and put a kind of our spin and our humor and our point of view and trying to make something that we can look at and be like, yeah, this does express what mm-hmm. we've been trying to express in an honest way. And then what form that takes, where that goes, I think you you really, you tie yourself down if you're like, well, it has to take the form of a feature right. film, right? It has to be, what, a 70 minute feature, a 90 minute feature film? Mm-hmm. You know, I think that there's we're, we're entering a world where there's so much there's such a plurality of types of content where it's like, I'm, I, like I look at something, I'm like, man, well, how come there's not like a 50 minute feature film? Like mm-hmm. I see like these mm-hmm. action movies and it's just like, at a certain point I'm like, I get it. I, yeah, get it. I don't yeah, need yeah, all yeah. the, yeah. you know, 90 yeah. minutes. Like give me just a 60 minute feature film. And I think that like, it's so easy. And even like people on TikTok, you know, I think so many of my peers, like they just sort of dismiss it. It's like, oh, it's just short form. It's just dances and stuff like that. It's like, you're missing no, out no, yeah, on yeah. an entire generation getting onto a creative platform and trying things mm-hmm. and trying things creating in a, a way. Visual language, creating new visual language. Tell stories quickly, like, and, and I see some of the stuff, and I'm like, blown away because I look at that and I'm like, I would have been, this would have been my entire life when I was like, when I was in high school, right? Yeah. I didn't have that. I had an um, iMac and like a you know <laughs> TV camera, and that's what, and using iMovie was what I was doing in high school. But mm-hmm. like with a phone, I think that it's like it's, it's very easy to get caught up in the form that something takes, and you miss mm-hmm. the sort of the process itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want to get your thoughts because even speaking about the process and I really like what you're saying here is like it's never enough to be satisfied with like it has to be a feature film or it has to look like this. Yeah. Creativity in many ways just kind of like works itself out and you yeah. just got to follow that process. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love when directors and writers say like this is what the character would do versus yeah, like yeah. what I think they yeah. should do. And it seems to be the same way in like the creative sense. But speaking of like creativity, I feel like there's a war going on with like making movies in the traditional sense, yeah. and then now AI is like coming into it now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you think like that benchmark of like making a movie in the traditional sense uh, is gonna be around when like AI comes into play? I, well, I have a lot. I, I have a lot. About it. a lot. <laughs> I think that I think that what we're seeing is we're seeing like when I look at generative AI, I see that as a part of a longer form trend, which comes down to, in, in, lack of a better term, like wish fulfillment mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And when I say wish fulfillment, I think it applies to everything in our lives right now. And in the same sense that it's like, cool, I got DoorDash, Uber Eats delivery, like right. that's wish fulfillment, right? You can get the exact food you want delivered to the exact to time my you want. door, <laughs> in front of my door. I left at my door. I don't even want to talk to another human being. I want them to Just leave it. You know, it. they have an option on the thing. I, the other day, the other someone. day I bought something. The other day I bought for something on Amazon, and I was like, <laughs> angry that I couldn't get it that day. <laughs> And I was like, well, I ordered before 9 a.m. How come I can't get by 5 p.m.? And I, I had to like take a second right, and be like, right. wait, wait, hold on. Like, <laughs> not long ago, like not that long ago, it was like, yeah, I'll wait two weeks and they'll show up, like whatever, no problem. But now it's like, it's gotta be here today. So there's a sort of like trend towards like, I think like comfort and like yeah. everything around us is kind of like trying to serve us and kind of give us comfort. Even mm-hmm. on the like, content algorithms, uh, they, everyone uh, figured out, right? Yeah. Twitter, Reddit, everyone figured out that's like, if we give you the thing, even TikTok, right? If you give you the thing that you like, you're gonna hang around yes. more, right? If we challenge you, even psychologically, we don't like being challenged, and that's like, oh, I'm gonna close the app now. So it's like everything is feeding us towards like that comfort. Mm-hmm. And so like I, when I look at generative AI, you know, the people who are you know pushing the the boundaries of that, you know, a lot of it even is coming from like you know, let's be let's be honest, like all technologies, there's a pornographic side of it where people are really trying, yeah. <laughs> but like, but that is in a certain sense when people talk about like what is this generative content thing look like, it. It comes from the point of view of the person who is generating it, mm-hmm. i.e. they can generate something that they want to see, right? Mm-hmm. And I'll question, the, to me the big question artistically is like, is that interesting, is that a sustainable thing? Right. Do people want to live in their own lucid dream generators mm-hmm. and be able to just get fed everything they want to see? Or do we have any, do we get joy out of someone else's point of view, right? Mm-hmm. Can we, uh, in a way it's like, can you tickle yourself? Can you generate a thing that makes you laugh as much as someone else who surprises you in the way that they mm-hmm. approach an art or approach comedy or do a stand-up set or something like that? So I think that there's a certain percentage of people where that's gonna be good enough. Mm-hmm. And that's, that percentage of people can be like, generative AI is everything I wanted. Right. I can go, I can sit and I can just throw stuff in my, in my, like my brain and I'm like happy with that. Right. But I think that's not everybody. And I think that's like a lot of times there's always this like all or nothing approach. Like, well, when this new thing's gonna come, it's gonna completely wipe out. It's like, no, of course not. Yeah, well, I wanna talk about like the people on the other side. You said the people who are like kind of consuming it, right? Yeah. Like yeah. what do they want? But I'm, uh, I just found out that Tyler Perry like purchased a eight hundred million dollar yeah, expansion yeah, yeah, yeah. on right, his studio right. after seeing what like AI can do. Yeah. Like, what do you guys make of like 
the other side of the coin yeah, I think what's coming. I, I mean, it's, I mean, again, it's, it's tough. But I think on, on, in my point of view, there's going to be, without sounding judgmental, there's, there are certain types of art that's being made that will probably be served by AI, to kind of what phrase point. Yeah. Like art that is like, essentially there just to satisfy the audience, give them what they want. Like, you know, if you're doing some sort of like certain art that, you know, is essentially commissions or things like that, mm-hmm. that AI might, AI might replace that. Yeah. But to me, like, all art is cyclical, like, when photography came about, like photographs, like photographs are the easiest thing in the world, right? Like anybody can press was, a button. There's, there's, there's now filters that can make your photographs look like freaking and the, and the discussion when, when photographs first came out was, is the act, even on the legal sense, was the act of pressing a button to take a photograph sufficient creative input to justify First Amendment protection, mm-hmm. to justify free expression protection on a photograph? Mm-hmm. Because you're not painting. And then you go back to painting, it's like when, when, when pre-mixed paints first came out, <laughs> painters were like, you're not mixing your pigments yourself in your oil medium? What a loser. You're not a real painter. You're buying pre-made colors? What are you, 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 you create color and you put it on canvas and you're buying it pre-made from a factory? Like this, this debate is- Something tells me yeah. like this happened to you. Like, yeah. 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 Somebody, somebody I mean, to me, like, it's funny because you started by saying like the thing scared you, the, you know, the existential crisis. To me, as long as, until humanity has solved all of its problems, mm-hmm. I'm not concerned about AI art replacing art because all right. art really is, like I, I think its best form is, somebody trying to express their dealings with the impossible, like right. whether it's just emotion, what love is, what what death is, any of these things, and whether or not that's impressionistic or realistic or you know photography or whatever, mm-hmm. whether it's AI trying to give you what you want, until somebody's answered it, there's always gonna yeah. be a reaction of like, well, that I understand that now, uh, the whole world feels like this, so let me look outside to art. Like I think right. art should be challenging. So I've never, it's just as an artist, I'm not that concerned, like, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of practical stuff, like definitely concerned in terms of like replacing people's jobs mm-hmm. and, and and unions and things like that. Like we need to be careful with it. But just in terms of like, I, I'm not again. Right. Maybe I'm optimistic. I feel like humanity is always going to look for that well, imperfections in art. I'm very optimistic. And yeah. in terms of like, because last question, because we could talk about this stuff all yeah. day. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'll keep you here, but we have other guests <laughs> coming. But if you could give like advice to those people who I feel like are always going to be around as long as they have that creative passion to yeah. kind of like do things like you guys and create things on like who have created things on a shoestring budget and self finance. Yeah. 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 What are your tips to those people who are like hoping to create things on the shoestring budget? Yeah, yeah. I think it is you have to always be asking yourself, like, is this thing that I'm making, is it fulfilling to me creatively, right? Mm-hmm. Because I've seen so many of my peers, even in the YouTube side, like the analogy I gave is like when Minecraft first came out, I knew like 20 people who were like, I'm starting a Minecraft channel. Mm-hmm. Why? Because it's getting views. Mm-hmm. And all the kids are watching Minecraft, I'm gonna get the, the clicks, I'm gonna and they would keep it up for like a few months. Yeah. And at a certain point, it's like this. This is not who they were. This is not yeah. anything that they cared about. It didn't even matter that I've some of them were making money, too, yeah. right? They were making good money in some of those cases. They hated it, and they all. And at this point, none of those people started. And the people who do, are like who became like the Minecraft YouTubers, right? They were the people Passionate who were like they were they so love, into they it. They it. loved doing. Yeah. Something about that expression really scratched some itch that they mm-hmm. had. So I think what it is is like find what's like itchy in your own sort of creative self mm-hmm. and like scratch that itch and. Sometimes there's gonna be money there, sometimes there's not gonna be money there, but I do know that if you only chase money and views and that yeah. sort of, those metrics, yeah. you're, you, you can't last with it. It's not, it's just, it doesn't even matter how much money you make. Mm-hmm. And if, to, to back to your other points, like to, to take swings at bat, like don't limit to yourself. Like if we just went with like, we wanna make a film, cause you know, we grew up on making films, we wanna make films. Of course. But if we only went like, we gotta make a movie, I don't think we would have ever made this movie. We mm-hmm. took a roundabout way, we did YouTube stuff, we did web series, you know. We grew a company, then we lost a company. We did TV and then it's like, okay, well now we're gonna do a podcast. Cause like Dungeon Daddy just came from like, we wanna tell stories in a way that we can do during the pandemic or we can do like locally and like without any money. like. Just keep, if you want to tell stories, like find a way to tell stories. Don't be hung up on, I have to tell stories this way because that's where the money is or that's what or is popular now or the prestigious. Or what, yeah, like, like just find a way to tell a story. And then if you keep doing it, you never know what's going to be a success. You never know what's going to connect with people. But just keep trying because that's, that's where you learn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although you're like, like I'm going to my chair just like, yes, yes. Wait, I'm going to repost this and I'm going to have some inspirational. It's going to be like a piano. You know, I'm going to put time from a, <laughs> from my interstellar on it. It is going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Guys, thank you so much well, for coming for by us. to the studio, man. Seriously, exactly. this is hey, excellent. I mean, pleasure. we can't have them for five minutes, huh? No? No, five minutes? No, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in my head like, no, no. get him out of here. I'm your host, Juju Green. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure you check out the rest of our interviews uh, at youtube.com backslash XXSW. Yeah. Guys, this was amazing. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, much man. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you for being here. Yeah, like this was.